nothing we said was enough. His wife then started attacking as well. We asked them to leave, they wouldn't leave. He then, his wife had to pull him away. We thought he was going to hit us. We then said we'd call the police. He said, I'm not moving until the police get here. This was over rice. Dirty Linen's aim is to cover the hospitality industry in all its aspects, some of them good, some of them not so good. We're going to focus on the way that staff are treated by customers for a few days on the podcast. And I'm going to start by reading out an Instagram post that really just got me in the heart when I saw it yesterday from Bob's Your Uncle Cafe in Melbourne's Doncaster East. And this was the post. Dear customers, due to excessive abuse from a customer today, causing the owner and a staff member in tears, we have made the decision to close for the remainder of the day to support mental health. We have encountered this type of abuse every day since reopening over minor things like our rice being white and not butterfly pea colour due to us not being able to get the ingredient and other examples like abuse with regards to our policies in place to protect you and our team through this pandemic. Today's situation broke us and we are needing today to reflect and rebuild. We are sorry for any inconvenience this may cause you and we hope for your continued support. Lisa. Lisa Bilston from Bob's Your Uncle Cafe, we've got you with us today. Welcome and I'm so sorry for what you have been having to deal with. Thanks so much for having us and talking about this topic. It's, um, it's a serious topic now. Tell me what's been going on and how it's been impacting you and your staff. Okay, so look, I think uh, there's always been uh, an underlying amount of abuse in hospitality that has probably just been swept under the carpet. Um, at Bob's, we we do make a stand on it, um, so we don't tolerate any form of abuse by either the, the staff or the customer. So it's all about respect. We've just found since coming back... Um, from this, well, actually the first lockdown as well was the same, but this one's probably slightly worse. People are just abusing on a daily basis. So it's over anything. And I, look, I have my theory probably why it's happening, but I just think it needs to be more than a conversation now. We need to, as an industry, look at it and try to change it because it's not healthy. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's not helping our young people coming through. It's not helping anyone. It's not why anybody goes to work and I mean it's it's the hospitality industry it's so it's um so tricky to be in a, in a service industry and to um make, have people make it so hard for you to do your job well impossible really so tell me some of the, the tell me <clears throat> tell me some of the behavior that um you've encountered yeah so we've experienced you know things like what a lot of people are experiencing I'm not wearing a mask Okay, well, they just, you know, leave. This is things like, um, the, I think it was Wednesday, we had a, a, a guy in mid-40s. Uh, we do have policies in place that you are required to have a meal at busy times. That's because we're still under restrictions. We still only have, um, I think it's 80 square metres. We can have a maximum of 40. But to be honest with you, we had a lot of two, you know, couples in. So we're only having sort of maximum of 20 people in our cafe. So everyone is required to have a meal. On Wednesday, we had someone abusing me. We started on the staff. I then went out. He was abusing me, saying that I couldn't make him eat, that it was un-Australian, that it was against the law, um, yelling, carrying on, and then threatened to actually write a review, which he did. He, he wrote a Google review and he's actually changed that five times, that Google review. So that was on the Wednesday. Wow. Then, yeah. They're using the reviews as a threat, though, to cafe owners. You know, if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to write a review. And that's how it's just become. So that was on the Wednesday. Yesterday then, I mean, we've had it every day up until – you know, yesterday. Um, Then on yesterday, it was over butterfly pea rice. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, we couldn't get the butterfly pea in at the start. And to be honest with you, Danny, it's just, it's gone from my radar. I just had forgotten about trying to get it in the last week. So it's the same rice, but it's not purple, but it's the same rice. Yeah. 
So just to explain to people, butterfly, it's a flat, a butterfly pea is a flower that's used in, um, I know it's used in Laos and, you know, other uh, Asian countries to colour things. So you might have it in tea, you might have it colouring rice. And uh, really, as you say, it's a colour. It doesn't add really much in terms of flavour. It is and an antioxidant, but you've got to have a large amount to actually have any benefits. We just use it as a colour. So it's the same rice. <laughs> yep, yep. So it wasn't. So your rice was 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 white, and apparently that was the rice was white. A great a great amount of anger. Yes. So yeah, what happened? Yes. So then, uh, were the staff member? I was actually sitting down at the time um, with my daughter, who you saw probably on Instagram. She also works at Bob's, but she does have a HR company, so she's used to dealing with conflict, obviously a lot. Um, now the staff member came up to me and said. I have a problem, you know, with table five. I said, what is it? She said he doesn't, he's upset that the white, the rice is white and not purple. I said, are you kidding? Like, seriously? I went up and I said, what's the problem? And look, we do have QR codes for check-in and for our menu. So he could see the photo. He said the rice is white, not purple. And I tried to explain that we couldn't get the butterfly pea in, that it was actually the same rice. It's still a jasmine rice. Um, he then went on to say that the carrot in the photo was Dutch carrot. We actually do roasted carrot. I said, you need to look at the actual wording, which does say roasted carrots. You get a lot of roasted carrots. I'm really sorry. No, it wasn't enough. Nothing we said was enough. His wife then started attacking as well. We asked them to leave. They wouldn't leave. He then, his wife had to pull him away. We thought he was going to hit us. Wow. We then said we'd call the police. He said, I'm not moving until the police get here. Wow. This was over rice. Wow. I, I've got, I've just got chills, Lisa. Like this is, this is unbelievable. I mean, uh, yeah, like I'm. I've, I'm in tears listening to this story. It is so out of order. I mean, it does make me think, like, what is going on for that person that they behave like that, and that their their wife is caught up in that behaviour. I mean, it doesn't. I don't. I don't have a feeling that that's a happy household, but that shouldn't be your problem. And I suppose you know. And it shouldn't. And that's yeah. That's the thing, Danny. It shouldn't be our problem. I get everyone is going through something. I understand that, but. It's a privilege to come out. It's, it's not an entitlement. You're privileged to be able to come out. So enjoy it. My staff and all hospitality staff work incredibly hard. It's not an easy job and we all know that. You know, they don't have to feel like they're going to get up, come to work, be anxious about coming to work because they don't know what's on the other end. How are they going to be attacked today? It, it shouldn't happen. We've seen you know, we, we see posters in the supermarkets, you know, it, it reminding people that it's not okay to abuse the, the checkout staff. It, 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 when I see that, it's like, wow, <laughs> I just can't, like, who would, who would? But it, obviously it's an issue and it, it makes me feel like it's that same behaviour that's, and I suppose entitlement that is spilling over into your work arena. Um, I mean, what what do you think it, is let's talk about where you think it comes from like what do you think it is that um, that um causes or explains it, if this this behavior if indeed it can be explained yeah look i i think um i think with the pandemic everyone has been locked up everyone's been under restrictions they don't want to now come out and have rules so i think there is that element they don't want to comply with rules Unfortunately, there is still going to be rules. And to be honest with you, we have always, since 1991, had the policy that you have to have a meal at lunchtime. That's just how our cafes are. So, look, there is that part, but I do think that people just have become really rude. And I think a lot of cafes and restaurants are run by young people that the owner may not be there. So these poor young people are just putting up with it. So when these customers go to the next cafe, the next cafe, they're used to being able to behave that way. No one's, you know, calling them out. We need to now call it out. The owners need to provide or employers need to provide a safe environment for their staff. Absolutely. They need to say, <clears throat> I, I understand it's about the dollar. I, I get it. Look, we lost a few thousand dollars yesterday closing. I understand that. But... You can't put a price on mental health. You know, you've, you've, 
you might lose that $50 bill for those two people, but it's worth it in the long run when you create an environment that it isn't going to have this. You're always going to have unsatisfied customers, always. You can't please everyone. And that's okay. People can complain. There's a way of doing it. Mm, sure. It's not abuse. So did you end up calling the police for these customers yesterday? No, we didn't. No, he left. Um, there was other witnesses, um, you know, they saw that we were all in tears. And look, I'm a pretty tough person. I've been in the industry for 39 years. So, you know, I'm not I'm not a weak person. But it, yesterday broke me. And to see my staff upset, um, it's just my, my staff, look, all hospitality staff, but I'm just talking for my staff. They have worked so damn hard in the last, you know, it, oh, this whole year. It, it's just they don't deserve it. And I'm not going to – I'm going to protect them and I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep closing or asking people to leave if they're going to continue to abuse people. It's just a stand I'm going to make. And I I hope other employers start doing this. Do you ever have a a situation, Lisa, where you you call someone out for their behaviour and something clicks in them and they realise – Oh God! What am I doing? It's just, it's just rice. It's just, it's just my coffee. You know, tell, tell me, tell me about those scenarios. Yeah. So we had a customer um, actually from the after the last lockdown, and our older, well, middle aged woman. Um, they sat for a long lunch. She complained to the ends lengths of paying for two dollars for the water. Now we don't give you. We can't sanitize our water bottles through our big dishwasher, so we actually sell you water at cost price that's just our decision we've made um happier people bring their own water she went to town on us she obviously went home and thought about it because the next day she came in with flowers and she apologized wow and she said she went home and she reflected and she realized that she was out of line so yes we do i got an email this morning from someone that wrote a review two days ago on Google, giving a one star, um, telling me that he works in hospitality. He actually told me he owned a cafe in Camberwell. Um, he's removed his, his review and he apologised for that. Interesting. So, yes, occasionally you do get it, but it's only – it's it's rare. It's it, that They're probably the only two cases we've really had. It's, it is rare. Mm. With regards to the rules that you're operating under and, you know, obviously you've got restrictions to your business which mean that you need to, I mean, you need to make de- make decisions that give you any kind of chance of, of, of breaking even, perhaps even, uh, who knows, making a profit. Um, how, like, customers need to understand that you're not making decisions specifically to annoy them. You're making decisions to protect your business and, you know, to be there. You're making decisions to save your business, really. I mean, what what is it that, I mean, where's the breakdown, do you think? Like, why don't people, why can't people take that on? Accept that? Yeah. I think it's because they're, it's not what they want. So it's a control No, I don't want to pay for water. You're not allowed to do that. No, we're not allowed to do that if you're actually having alcohol, but we will supply you water. But if you're not having alcohol, we can't sanitise the bottle. Trust me. If And, you know, to be honest with you, Danny, the reason we probably also can't sanitise the bottle, we're really short-staffed. Hospitality, the whole industry will tell you at the moment, there's a shortage of staff. So we are so stretched that we don't have that one person extra to go and sanitise all the bottles. I'm trying to keep everyone safe. Yes, I do have a medical background, so maybe I am a little bit over the top, but I would prefer to be that way than not. So I think it's a case of people just, they just, they're sick of rules. They don't, they didn't have to have pay for water before. Why do we have to pay for it now? Because we're still in a pandemic. It's so interesting what you're saying because you, you, all the points you're making are so important. The fact that you're short-staffed, the fact that you're taking these extra measures to keep your staff and our wider community safe, you can really see how this kind of behaviour would wear people down and would would cause some people in some circumstances to cut corners and to 
make decisions, to let go of these of these strong, safe, fantastic measures and create a situation where your staff are under more stress and there's more um, we're, we're, we're less COVID safe. And I think this what you're talking about from you, you, the way that your customers or some of your customers are disregarding the importance of the COVID safe rules is is very concerning. And you know when you just put add that to the pressure um, of of running a business and you're in hospitality, saying no is draining even when it's the right thing to do. It's just it ma- it makes me worried. Look, we don't want to say no. Obviously, we're in hospitality. You want to say yes to everything. And if it was viable, you would say yes. But unfortunately, you're right in saying a lot of cafes aren't aren't complying where they possibly should be. So it gives these mix, mis, mixed messages to people. You know, we're not giving you water bottles, but, you know, somewhere else will be. Well, how come you're not? They are. Or, you know, where you can go get a coffee just at their place. Why can't we just get a coffee at your place? But I don't know how we get through to people that, unfortunately, you know, everyone is going to have different rules. This isn't a hobby. This is a business. And I want to be here for the long haul. We stayed open the whole time for takeaway. We supplied a whole menu. We have, you know, people, most of our staff on JobKeeper. We're trying to do the right thing. We pay award wages. We don't pay cash. You know, there's a lot of issues in this industry that is now coming to a head do you know like if we're if we're paying award wages and we're competing with people that might be paying twenty dollars cash on the weekends they can possibly go and you know just give water out it doesn't matter we can't we're paying 31 23 an hour so there's lots of different reasons why different cafes will have different rules Mm. and it's the differences it's the things that you do differently that draw customers to you. You know, it's the fact that, you know, you've, you've got a creative menu or you do that, you go to those extra levels. I mean, those differences that people can, you know, people the differences are your positive, like they're your power as well as, you know, in the minds of some people they're, they're a negative. So it's, it's like if people want to celebrate the diversity and choice, then you know, they need to come to the party as well and realise that sometimes, you know, diversity, choice and difference means that the cafe is going to run things a little bit differently and they just need to listen, learn, just do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 90% of our clientele love the way we, well, 95, you know, probably more, love the way we, we run, know that they're safe, know that we do it the right way, know that we look after our staff. We don't turn over staff. Our head chef's been here since the day we opened. We don't turn over staff. They know that. It's just the ones you you know, you know, get that can destroy your day. And that's what we have to try to stop in this industry. We got, you know, as you probably know, we got ugh, over a 1,000 messages on Instagram over that post. Now, the, some of the stories from, you know, wait staff, other cafe owners, this isn't just us that's having this problem you know it's it's across the board it's the whole industry and it 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 needs to be changed because I've been in it for 39 years but I've got a young girl working for me who's 21 she wants to be in it for 30 years if we don't start protecting her she'll be out of it within five you won't have good people in the industry because it's too hard and it's a great industry you decided to close, you know, after this incident. Can you can you talk about that process? Like, what did you? Was it? A, was it? Were you just like, nah, everyone out? Let's. I cannot. Or was it? I mean, was was that? Yeah, pretty much. It, yeah, it was pretty much. It was pretty much. I just was broken. I just turned to my daughter and said, I can't do this anymore. I can't do it. Looked at the staff, and they were just. You could see they were anxious again. You could see they were like, not again. They had that look on their face. And I, I just thought, just, let's just close. At the time, it was 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> so I hadn't been at work, you know, all that long. We, there was a couple of tables. They saw the whole situation. So they were just supporting us and, like, that's disgraceful. I can't believe people behave like that. So they were, you know, happy to, to sort of eat and go. Obviously, two of the staff or well, the head chef stayed, um, 
he still had things to do. A couple of the staff packed up and they I, they took themselves out for lunch. I just messaged them later on. I said, have a nice day, you know, enjoy the day. They still get paid for it. It's 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 not about that. It's about we need to just we needed to just we needed to protect ourselves. We needed to protect our mental health. It's I mean you've got you've got a you know a lot of responsibilities, don't you, Lisa? Because you've got the responsibility to look after yourself, but you do have this enormous responsibility to these people who are working for you. Can you just tell me a little bit about? that responsibility <clears throat> as an employer that you feel and sort of how that threads through the way that you run your business and, and the way that you feel as a person? Yeah, look, uh, for me, um, when I employ someone, it's quite a lengthy interview um, and we go through pretty much all our policies and procedures. I One of the things I do say to them at the interview, though, is we don't tolerate, and every, anyone that's come for an interview here will always tell you this, we don't tolerate any form of aggression, bullying, um, abuse. And I said, I'll always support you. So that is always my my motto at the start. So from the start, they know they're coming into an environment that, yes, you're probably still going to get it, but I'm always going to have your back. I'm going to support you. So because our staff have been here, look, and I, I do get really attached to my staff, I must admit, because I'm working alongside them. I'm not an owner that just comes in, picks up the money and goes. I'm here all day, every day, walking, working alongside them. So I do become very close and they are family. And I know that sounds cliche and everyone says, oh, they're family, but I actually feel like they are family. So, you know, you it's not a – you don't have to think about trying to protect them. It comes naturally because they're, they're like your kids and they're young. You know, they're, they're 21 and up. They're young. So I, we, I do have a responsibility like I do to my kids and I do feel for them and I, I don't want them coming to work thinking that, you know, what's going to happen today and I want them to be here long term. And I think if you want staff to stay long term, you have to protect them. You've got to look after them. You've got to provide an environment that is safe and they feel that they can come to you with anything. You know, it's an open door policy. You can tell me anything. If I'm if I'm not before, you know behaving properly, tell me, because we all have our bad days, and sometimes you know I'm not the perfect person. I you know, and sometimes I I will say things, and they they pull me up, and that's okay because then you reflect and you learn from it. You know, so we're we're like a family like that, and you, look, I think all employers should realise that they do have a responsibility to their staff these days. Well, they should have always. But it's even more so now, you know, with COVID, the more abuse. Mm. Yeah, I mean, what you're saying, I'm thinking about the way that you are able to reflect and you've got that insight into the impact of of various behaviours and the lack of insight that's demonstrated by somebody who is yelling at you about some rice. I mean, it just seems like that person is in in a very different mindset. Uh, I wonder, like, what do you think, how do you think we shift this? What what needs to be done? I think it needs to start, look, it's more than a conversation now, Danny. It's people need to put actions into place. You know, employees need to be talking to their employers. Employers need to, you know, sit staff down, have that conversation I'm here to protect you. Let's change the culture. It's about culture. It's changing the culture. It's not going to happen overnight. And look, it may not ever happen, but it needs to start to change somehow. So you're saying like the employees talk to the bosses and the so it's basically make the, and the bosses help to make the customers accountable for their behaviour? Is that sort of the chain or...? Personally, I think it should start with the employer, but I don't think you're going to have all employers doing because that. Because they're just not on the front line in that way. Yes, and I don't know if a lot of people – look, maybe some people, some employers are just going to think about the dollar. So – and look, it's really hard for a little 20-year-old to go to an employer and say, this is how I'm feeling. Um, but maybe don't don't work at those places. You know, there's, there's maybe you need to work in an environment that you feel safe and you feel supported. Because, you know, I was reading something last night about are you okay and 
the, the statistic was that 80% of hospitality staff feel that feel anxious going to work. I mean, that shouldn't be the case. You should go to work and, and know that you're going to have a good day and it's going to be happy because you're at work as much as you're at home. You shouldn't feel anxious. I mean, some of the messages we got, Danny, one of them in particular said, you know, she, you know, she worked in hospitality a few years ago. She was going to work and she one day thought she might just walk in front of a car because she couldn't stand the anxiety anymore of the customers. That shouldn't happen. I mean, that just, it shouldn't happen. So it, I wish every employer would actually, you know, make a stand and say, okay, let's change the culture. Let's sit down. Let's have the conversation. Let's educate the customer. Let's realize that the customer's not always right because the customer's not always right. Yes, you're going to get complaints and yes, most employers are going to try to fix it. Most cafe owners will fix it. But don't do not do it by abuse. You know, we will fix things. If you don't like your dish, we will get you something else. But you don't need to abuse the owners, the staff. And if you're going to lose that $50, employers, that's okay. It doesn't matter. It's $50. Your staff are going to stay longer. It's a bigger picture. So you reopened today, Lisa. Um, how, how, is the, how is the feeling? It is unbelievable. It is so positive. Um, the vibe is just, everyone is just happy for us to be open. We've had flowers sent. We've had chocolates brought in. The staff are just overwhelmed with this feeling of support. Like it's it's amazing, you know. And it just goes to show if you if you do the right thing and you stand up for your staff and you try to provide the right environment, it will pay you pay off. Yep, sure, we lost money yesterday, but so what? My staff are happy. This is about mental health. Good on you, Lisa. I mean, honestly, it, it just to be in the thick of such an awful situation and to make a, a decision in the in the moment that protected you and your staff to start this conversation in the community that obviously needs to be had I just take my hat off to you and um, I'm glad that you're feeling support because you absolutely deserve it it should never have come to this but uh, yeah we'll definitely keep this conversation going it's I'm just glad that yeah, I'm glad the conversation started and I'm, I'm hoping that this, you know, it might just save one person today, you know. Maybe one person, one customer won't go into a cafe and abuse someone today because maybe they've heard something, you know. And that's, I think if we just keep talking it, employers change, employees talk to their employers, let's hope that the culture in hospitality eventually changes and goes back to how it used to be when I first started out, you know, 39 years ago. Let's hope it goes back to that. Yeah, maybe it's like it's just too people will just take it too much for granted. I just would have thought that with with COVID and we we had it taken away from us, and I know there are people, and I count myself among them, who are so incredibly grateful to be in a cafe and realise the privilege that it is. Um, but people just they just there's no human right to have someone make you a coffee or some awesome bloody purple rice for that matter that is exactly <laughs> it's a privilege and people just need to keep it in perspective anyway lisa and we yeah. are going to make mistakes oh well, it <laughs> you know we're all human and so what like yeah, yeah. exactly yeah thank you so much danny i so appreciate it just this talk and all your help I really just wish you a beautiful day with happy, kind customers who realise, you know, how lucky they are to be at Bob's Your Uncle. So, yeah, good on you and you take care. Thank you, Lisa. You too. Thanks so much. Bye. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about. We spend a week thrashing around each issue hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This is a Deep in the Weeds production.